Right, let's do this. So Five Nights at Freddy's is a horror series where you take the role of a night guard and have to fend off animatronics haunted by the dead spirits of five unalive children. But wait, how did this happen? Well, those five dead spirits are the victims of the infamous purple guy, aka William Afton. But wait, why is he game ending children? What's his motive? What do you care? What do you think I am, Matbat? Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory! We see someone in the secret becoming one with the Force minigames in FNAF 2, the prequel to FNAF 1, while the old animatronics from the first game are now withered. Despite this being a prequel, and this is because of some incidents, most likely the infamous by Baby 7, that's not actually the infamous one that set everything in motion, but the by Baby 3, as revealed in FNAF 4, and we still don't know the relevance of the by Baby 7 line that the phone guy says in FNAF 1, but one step at a time here, although I think we've already just fallen downstairs. Uh, anyway. The women's versions of the FNAF 1 animatronics suggest someone was dumb enough to refurbish them back into an acceptable state in time for FNAF 1 who, and why did they do this? I don't know, capitalism or something, you tell me. You may have also noticed I said 5 animatronics and not 4 free power gloves ago, and that's because of the secret fifth one, Golden Freddy, whose victim name is the most important in the law, Cassidy, as she's the one that William Afton should not have expunged implying Cassidy was the first victim and then sought revenge against her reaper by getting the other four to possess the animatronics and hunt him down, except it wasn't her that gave him life but instead the puppet from FNAF 2 which we can see happened in the Give Life Secret Exit Wolf minigame. However, in Ultimate Custom Light, which is most likely not canon but you know for sure still is somehow, a life expired life from Wimp Chica has a state I was the first. I have seen everything. So we can assume Cassidy was just a eventual karma for William, and no, the Cassidy that possesses Golden Freddy is not the same Cassidy that we play as in Secure Breaches DLC Ruin. This series has a problem with reused names that really confuses the lore. Moving on, the Spice Spirits finally get to haunting William after, which we can see in one of the secret minigames in FNAF 3, where he escapes into a Springlock body suit. No, the kids won't attack him because of poor object permanence or something, who cares? But through his maniacal laughter and atrocious sweating from trying to outrun a few kid ghosts, he triggers the spring locks mentioned in the same game, creating himself a chamber of permanent dirt nap as he leaks strawberry juice everywhere. Come on man, super inconsistent for cleaners. This is the infamous spring lock failure that occurred in an unnamed sister location, no, not that one, that led to the removal of the suits in 1983, which we can put together was not too long after the bite of 83, that we can assume is how this event happened in the first place, with the kids' tears triggering the spring locks that for some reason weren't put back in its animatronic state. Hey, don't look at me, I'm trying here, I really am. But seriously, get over the big animatronic bear, you wuss. You're only inside its mouth. Grow up. This is all your fault, honestly. Now, you may be wondering how the suits weren't decommissioned right after the Bite of 83 incident, and to that I'll say, maybe they were, and the spring bunny suit was just chilling in the back there, and then they just forgot to trash it. Most competent Fazbear establishment. And that Bite of 83 I've mentioned four times up to, and including this line, this took out the frontal lobe of the kid, causing him to then see the animatronics in a new, more horrific way, but I don't know how he's seen more hor horrifying versions of the modern cast when they didn't exist by this point in time, play, but sure, why not? There's also the matter of the lockbox at the end of FNAF 4 that we still don't know anything about. Maybe it's in the books or something, I don't know, I can't read. The next game was Sis Location, not not the Sis Location mentioned in Spring Buffet, the... I don't actually know when this one takes place, but it's before William Afton leaves tomato jam everywhere, so there's that much. Since the kitchen introduces us to another major character in the lore, Circus Baby, or rather, Elizabeth Afton, who now haunts the animal truck after being lied to about free ice cream. And in this one, you also play as Michael Afton, the son of William Afton, who is trying to investigate how all this shit got kicked up in the first place, and eventually lost souls. But then he gets his brain scooped out and taken over by an amalgamation of the other sister location animal trucks. This is one of them, by the way. Why is she so thick, called Emmett? Do you get it? In it! This is not the same amalgamation that becomes the blob in Security Breach and actually just never shows up again after escaping Michael's run self. This all eventually leads into Pizzeria Simulator where you're tasked with luring all the trapped souls of women's victims, well most of them, and setting them all ablaze within the Pizzeria you've worked so hard to put together all the while the hardest speech ever given the media is playing in the background. Connection terminated. I'm sorry to interrupt you Elizabeth, if you still even remember that name, but I'm afraid you've been misinformed. You are not here to receive a gift, nor have you been called here by the individual you assume, although you have indeed been called. And to you monsters trapped in the corridors, be still and give up your spirits. They don't belong to you. For most of you, I believe there is peace and perhaps more waiting for you after the smoke clears. Although for one of you, the darkest pit of hell has opened to swallow you whole. Don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. Damn. And then, after that, what, you thought we were done? Oh, you sweet, naive thing. So, as I was saying, after Pizzeria Simulator, comes FNAF VR, and oh god, here we go. 
Fluffier, or how wanted, is an every universe attempt by Fast Friends Entertainment 8 to discredit and or make light of controversies throughout the IP's existence, such as the Bite of A3 and Springlot failure, that are all totally false and have just been made up by some rogue indie dev, that dev being Scott Cawthon, aka the actual real life dev of the FNAF series who I guess is just canon now? Makes sense I guess, he was the voice of the phone guy in FNAF 1. Oh look, there's a new villainous entity in the form of Glitch Truck. It's just William after the game who somehow found a way to digitally insert himself into the game as the virus looking for a new host. Yeah. But hey, at least it's interesting to think about how this might have been the suit after you used to commit delete use on those kids way back when. Wow, that sounds really messed up actually. That aside, we can find these mysterious tapes throughout How Wanted, which when played in order gives a timeline of events of Glitch Truck projecting new victims through the perspective of the dubbed Tape Girl. Put a pin in that, we'll get into it in a second. So anyway, two years later we got Security Breach where we're playing as a kid called Gregory trying to escape this huge liminal space 80s mall that absolutely does not fit the previous vibe of FNAF at all, but also trying to survive getting caught by armed and a security guard known as Vanessa. I'm pinning that thing I mentioned a power graph ago because through the states we can also obtain here, we can find out that Vanessa has been in contact with some unknown person, or entity, rather, which can be seen in the FNAF AR mobile game which yes is canon too, and has fallen under their control because remember possession is a common thing in the series and has donned a bunny suit, much like her little mentor becoming Vanny. Do you get it? It's like Vanessa and Bunny in one! Isn't that so clever? God, it's like the series is written for children or something. Why has Vanny got it going on too? Through some theorising we can also connect Vanessa to the tape girl and help wanted but this connection has never been outright stated but knowing me it's probably in the book somewhere, shame I can't read. Nevertheless, upon completing the game in one of the secret endings you can encounter- Oh look, there he is again! This mangled monstrosity is known as Burn Trap. Hey, I guess that one bucket kicking line from Afton in P3 Assembly wasn't lying. I always come back. That man was spitting facts. However, this ending isn't considered canon, but like, come on, it probably is somewhere, let's be real here. Then, a year and a half later, we got its DLC, Ruin, where we play as Cassidy, and again, it's not that Cassidy, and hell, it's not that one either. In an attempt to rescue Gregory from under the pizza plex after the place went to crap for some reason. I don't know, it might have something to do with the freely Remiana trucks or the company's reputation, or even the existence of another pizzeria place underneath that. I have no idea how this place wasn't audited early on because of the fact. Well, anyway, this Gregory turns out to be a new entity known as the Mimic, a being that can, well, mimic anything it desires, whether it be the voice or form of something, which, of course, has a major role in the books, but you know by this point that I can't count, so it's beyond me to care. And there you go, a swiftish summary of FNAF lore. Wait, the movie's out now, isn't it? Ah. Damn it all!